Thank you for cruising by for my daily devotions, April 22nd, 2024. <clears throat> Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, John chapter 4, Psalm 109, and 1 Samuel 25 today. Uh, yesterday, we read the 16th chapter, the last chapter of Romans. It's very personal. Uh, Paul talks to, uh, to people personally that he loved and had served with. And he kind of summarizes that point of the 16th chapter by in the 16th verse by saying this, greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send greetings. The fellowship of those who serve the Lord together is profound. And <clears throat> we need to see each other as beloved friends, brothers and sisters. And that's how he's treating it. We need to see each other that way, even on this YouTube channel brothers and sisters in Christ. Hope you see it that way. I certainly do. Uh, God is good, and uh, those who serve him together are a part of that goodness. And we should, um, maybe we don't greet one another with a holy kiss, but with a, a hearty handshake, okay? And um, that's how they greeted each other, kiss each other on the cheek. <clears throat> but we might greet with a hearty handshake and say, bless you, brother. So I want to maybe start the day off like that today. Bless you, brother. Bless you, sister. Greetings in the name of the Lord. Well, let's take a minute and pray. We'll jump into it. Father, thank you for speaking to us today. I know you want to make a difference in our lives as you address us. So change us, Father. Make us your people your way uh, from the inside out with the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy together with, with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of, the, of his grace given you in Christ. For in him, you have been enriched in every way in all your speaking and all your knowledge because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another and that there be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized into the name of Paul? I am thankful that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. So no one can say that they were baptized into my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the intelligence of the intelligent I, intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world through its wisdom, uh, the wisdom of the of the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know Him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand, demand miraculous signs, and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Brothers, think of what you were before you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, 
so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boast, boast in the Lord. John chapter 4. This is Jesus talking to that Samaritan woman. This is a great chapter. This is a great chapter. A lot of stuff to learn here. The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. When the Lord learned of this, he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered it, her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman uh, said, You have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can, I, where can you get this living water? <clears throat> Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his flocks and his herds? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks the, this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become <clears throat> in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Woman the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw come coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You're right when you say you have no husband. <clears throat> the fact is that you've had five husbands, and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. <clears throat> but you Jews claim that the place we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and now has come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. <clears throat> For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Jesus declared, then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. Yep, I'm the Messiah. That's what he's saying to her. She had to blow her mind. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking to a woman. But no one asked, what, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. And he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you say four months more and then the harvest? <clears throat> I tell you, open your eyes and look for the, at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now the harvest, the, he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. I, he told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. After the two days... Uh, we, he left for Galilee. Now Jesus himself 
had pointed out that a prophet has no honor in his own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him. They had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem and the Passover feast, for they also had been there. Once more he visited Cana in Galilee, where he had turned water to wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son lay sick at Capernaum. When this man heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went and begged him to come and to heal his son who was close to death. Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, Jesus told him, you will never believe. The royal official said, sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus replied, you may go, your son will live. The man said to Jesus, the man took Jesus at his word and departed. While he was still on the way, the servants met him with the news that the boy was living. When he inquired as to the time when his son got better, they said to him, the fever left him yesterday at the seventh hour. Then the father realized that this was the exact time at which Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he and all his household believed. This was the second miraculous sign Jesus performed, having come from Judea to Galilee. Wow. Psalm 109. Psalm 109. I'll get there. O oh God, whom I praise, do not remain silent, for wicked and deceitful men have opened their mouths against me. They have spoken against me with lying tongues. With words of hatred, they surrounded me. They attacked me without cause. In return for my friendship, they accuse me, but I am a man of prayer. They repay me evil for good and hatred for my friendship. Appoint an evil man to oppose him. Let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is tried, let him be found guilty. And may his prayers uh, condemn him. Many, may his days be few and another take his place of leadership. Uh, may his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. May his children be wandering beggars. May they be driven from their ruined homes. May a creditor seize all he has. May strangers plunder the fruits of his labor. May no one extend kindness to him or take pity on his fatherless children. May his descendants be cut off their names blotted out of the next generation. May the iniquity of the fathers be remembered before the Lord. May the sin of his mother never be blotted out. May their sins always remain before the Lord, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. For he never thought of doing a kindness, but, ha but hounded to death the poor and the needy and the brokenhearted. He loved to pronounce a curse. May it come on him. He found no pleasure in blessing. May it be far from him. He he wore cursing on his garments and entered into the body of water into and entered into his body like water into the bones like oil. May it be a cloak wrapped around him like a belt tied forever around him. May this be the Lord's payment to my accuser, to those who speak evil of me. But you, O sovereign Lord, deal well with me for your name's sake. Out of all the goodness of your love, deliver me. For I am poor and needy and my heart is wounded within me. I fade away like evening shadow, like an evening shadow. I'm shaken off like a locust. My knees give way from fasting. My body is thin and gaunt. I am an object of scorn to my accusers. When they see me, they shake their heads. Help me, O Lord, my God. Save me in accordance with your love. Let them know that it is your hand that you, O Lord, have done it. May they curse, but not, but they may curse, but you will bless. When they attack, they will be put to shame, but your servant will rejoice. My accusers will be clothed with disgrace and wrapped in shame as a cloak. With my mouth, I will greatly extol the Lord. In the great throng, I will praise him. For he stands at the right hand of the needy one to save his life from those who condemn him. First Samuel chapter 29. First Samuel. I love First Samuel. Get into King David's stuff in 1 Samuel. Wonderful. 1 Samuel 29. The Philistines gathered all their forces at Aphek, and Israel camped by the spring of Jezreel. As the Philistine rulers marched with their units of hundreds and thousands, David and his men were marching at the, at the rear with Achish. The commanders of the Philistines asked, What about these Hebrews? Achish replied, Is this not David who has 
was an officer of Saul, king of Israel. He has already been with me for over a year, and from the day he left Saul until now, I have found no fault in him. But the Philistine commanders were angry with him and said, Send the man back, he may turn to, that he may return to the place you assigned him. He must not go with us into battle, for he will turn against us during the fighting. How better could he regain his master's favor than by taking the heads of, your own, of our own men? Isn't this the David they sang about in their dances? Saul has slain the thousands, and David his tens of thousands. So Achish called David and said to him, As surely as the Lord lives, you have been reliable, and I would be pleased to have you serve with me in the army. From the day that you came out, uh, 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 came to me until now, I have found no fault in you, but the rulers don't approve of you. Turn back and go in peace. Do nothing to displease the Philistine rulers. But what have I done? Asked David. What have I found? What have you found uh, against your servant from the day I came uh, to you until now? Why can't I go and fight against the enemies of my lord the king? Achish answered, I know that you have been pleasing in my eyes as an angel of God. Nevertheless, the Philistine commanders have said he must not go up with us into battle. Now get up early and along with your master's servants who have come with you and leave in the morning as soon as it's light. So David and his men got up early in the morning to go back to the land of the Philistines and the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Misunderstood where David was. He was very supportive of him. Remember to subscribe, and I hope you hit the bell and share this stuff with someone else. It could be a blessing to them. Let's pray. Father, thank you for speaking to us. Change our lives by the truth we heard. Make us different because we heard from you. Write new laws on our heart with the power of the Holy Spirit according to the truth of the word that you've spoken to us. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.